I began my piano lessons at five years of age uh, and was very well supported by my family. Both grandmothers were fine pianists and my maternal grandmother studied with Edward McDowell, the very famous American composer. So they found, my parents found, an excellent teacher for me and I began at five years old and have continued really nonstop ever since except for when my babies were babies and I wanted to take the time with them. I gave my first concert at 14 in Schenectady and uh, she felt at that time that I needed somebody to take me a little bit further on. So that was where I studied with this man in New York who was a composer and who gave me many new ideas including new music and uh, when it came time to go to college we found, I found that in the, all of places we visited that Vassar College had the finest one a music department that appealed to me with a beautiful building off campus uh, to practice and a wonderful concert hall and I was so glad I'd gone. My piano teacher was German Swiss or Swiss German and she wanted me very much after graduation to study in Germany because that was where my technique my, would be very helpful in my development. So my roommate and I took off for Freiburg, Germany, and spent a year and a half there. I studied with a very fine German piano teacher and she with a, a cello teacher. And at that time, there were many pian um, America houses situated in the different cities in Germany. And they were, of course, there to give the American way of life and also to uh, assist American performers. So I asked to play in the America House in Freiburg and was allowed to give a concert there as long as I played an American work. So I played the Samuel Barber Excursions and gave a concert at the Freiburg America House. And I got to know some singers, some opera singers, and they needed a pianist. So I toured around Southern Germany with, with them. And that was lots of fun. And I always, always had a, a, something to play in their programs. I had lost some confidence in Germany because the teacher had been so strict and really rather no, pre no, no mistakes, no mistakes, no mistakes, which is ridiculous because you can't play music without a little slip now and then. So the teacher I had in Boston was just wonderful and gave me lots more confidence. And the high point of my years in Boston was that I played with the Boston Pops. I played the Edward McDowell Piano Concerto, the composer that my grandmother had studied with, with the Boston Pops and got reviewed in the Boston papers, which was very exciting. I met my husband, got married, came to New York, and uh, didn't give up piano. We bought this piano and I practiced and, um, for a while, and, and eventually two little babies came who were so beautiful and so wonderful that I, I didn't give up music, but I took a breather for about a year while they were very, very tiny. It was very important for me to be with them. And once they were the age to go to nursery school, I was going back to music fast. So I coached with a, a very fine teacher, Claude Frank, who is no longer alive. And he gave me the inspiration to get back and work. So I finally gave my New York debut, which I think was very uh, exciting. I was reviewed, not terribly well, but the fact was I was reviewed, something was in the paper, and I had done it. I, knew that I was not the kind of uh, pianist who was just going to tour the world and, and be smashing success. I didn't, I had a family and I did some thinking and I had a, a woman who was part manager and she said, well, I think maybe it's time for you to do some European debuts. I thought, oh yes, that's later, let's do that. So I debuted at Wigmore Hall, which was one of the scariest experiences I've ever had. First of all, it was not New York, it was England. And secondly, the waiting area backstage was filled with pianists who had been very famous. And I thought, okay, I'm here, I'm going to go out and play, but this is very scary. I was reviewed and rather nicely. That, I went on from there to Berlin, played in the Bibliothek. And at some point, I don't think it was on the first trip, I played in Vienna at the Brahms Halle, which was very, very wonderful. Once in a while I got a review, it was not so important, really. I mean, I had enough to go on and I just enjoyed the experience so much. And sometimes my family came with me. So this was a very 
good thing for me to do, to do these debuts in Europe and to get reviewed. I came back and, and have done lots of playing since then. With two children, it's not possible. I did not want to be gone a long time, so I did, didn't want the long tour, tours. But what I did do was to join the music faculty of a music school in here in New York, the Turtle Bay Music School, where I taught for 10 years, and then moved on to the Third Street Music School settlement, where I've had an amazing relationship, an extraordinary relationship for over 30 years. I came in there as chair of the piano department for 13 years and had to resign, not retire, resign, because it was such a big job, I had no time to practice. And since performing is what I do, I had to, and turned it over to someone else. And eventually I ran the concert series down there, and now I'm working with the older adult students who want to perform and have no place to do this. And they, it's a very wonderful community. Maybe performing-wise, the playing with the Boston Pops was the high point. I have played with many string quartets, I have played with other symphonies, but playing with the Boston Pops was like nothing else. So that's been a very exciting venture for me to, first of all, learn more American music. So I, I feel that the American music has been a very crucial part of my life. And it all started in Germany, which just always amuses me no end. <laughs> uh, but I'm the, the concert program that I will be playing at the end of April here in New York ha, has the program includes works by Schumann, both Robert and his wife, Clara, Debussy, and the rest is all American music that I have commissioned. Uh, it is an amazing experience to know a living composer. So I think the one world I would say would be grateful, extremely grateful for the life I've had. I, I have gone, I think, a long way. I have been very gratified with what I've learned and what I've been able to do. I love talking about music. And every year at the Third Street Music School, on American Music Day, I do a lecture and organize a program. I have also taught music history, which is wonderfully exciting. And I've learned so much through doing that. But I, I love to talk about music. And I suppose when, when the fingers aren't quite so strong, maybe that's what I'll end up doing, which is wonderful. There's just so much still being written. There's so much out there that has already been written. And one can choose from all these wonderful. But it's hard work. I have to say, physically, it is hard work. The practice has to be there. You cannot play too many wrong notes. Once, one once in a while. As this older mentor friend of mine said, wrong notes can be beautiful. So don't worry about it. What you want to put across is the music, the brilliance of it, the, the mood of it, and that if you drop a note, it really doesn't matter. What I would push young people to do is to think creatively, open your ears to everything, and not to give up. If somebody says, I don't think you ought to do that, ask why, or figure out why you should do it. It's been a wonderful life. It is a wonderful life. It still goes on. I have a concert coming up in four weeks here in New York and then coming up in, J in July in Bar Harbor, Maine. And I don't intend to stop.